In this tutorial, we are going to expand on what we learned in the last tutorial about creating custom material instances by creating completely custom cell shaded materials. We're going to start by creating this animated hue shift effect, then we're going to create an effect where the thickness of our pattern is animated, and lastly we're going to learn how to use any textures for, our, for the color of our shadows and our highlights. We're going to begin by creating a material with an animated hue cycle effect. For this custom material, make sure to set the shading model to unlit and then add the opaque material attributes node here. Connect it like this. And now we want to modify our base color. So let's add a vector 3 parameter and set it to red and now use the hue shift node so we can modify this hue. Make sure to connect this into the texture output. Now connect this into base color and um, now we need to animate this U shift percentage parameter. For this let's use the time node and let's only take the fractional part of this. Now you can see it's animated but really fast. So let's slow this down a bit by multiplying this by 0 0.2 and connect this to the fractional part. And, as you can see, we've now got an animated hue cycle effect. Now for all the other parameters, what we can just do is we can use the opaque default inputs node to have something that we can plug into this so that in any material instances of this material we can configure anything, any, any of those parameters just like we do in the normal material instances. For the UVs, let's connect the um, default UV's SRS node in the year. And with this, we're basically pretty much done. Now let's quickly take a look at customizing this in a material instance. As you can see, it all looks really familiar. The only th difference is that we don't have a base color parameter right here, because we didn't plug this base color into our base co color input right here. Now what we could do, for example, is make the highlights a bit stronger, just like with any other material and modify the size of the highlights, for example. So, as you can see, modifying it is really the same as we did in all the other material instances previously. For these next two examples, we are going to learn how to expose more parameters to the inputs on our material attributes nodes. Let's start with highlight thickness animated. Now I want this material to be translucent, so let's set the blend mode to translucent. And here, we're going to need the translucent material attributes node right here. And once again, connect all those outputs like this. And now let's create the default inputs for the translucent. Like this. Let's connect everything. And plug the default UVs into the UVs input right here. Now let's quickly hop into a material instance and explain what we're going for. For this, let's set the pattern texture to dots. And decrease the scale of the pattern texture, like this. Alright, what I want for this effect is for the dots to get bigger and smaller in a cyclical pattern. And I'd like for it to be inverse, so on, on opposite sides of this gradient, so in the center, it should be big when it's small on the outside, and when it's big on the outside, it should be small in the center. To do this, we need to modify the min thickness and max thickness parameters of our pattern in on runtime. And in order to do that, um, we need to modify those parameters in our material. So, we need to expose those parameters to our inputs in this node. So let's do that. Let's navigate to this node in our content browser. It's under stylized rendering system for mobile, material functions, and here we'll find MF translucent material attributes, SRS. Let's duplicate this and call this material attributes exposed one. Open this material attributes node and here you'll find many, many different um, function inputs. Those are the inputs that you can see right here. And we can find lots of scalar parameters. These are these green and green nodes, and we can find some other parameters like these for our color and these for some textures. 
And those parameters are the ones that you can edit in your instance. All these parameters down here. Now what we want to do is we want to expose some of those parameters that we can find down here. Now, in order to expose these values right here to our material function right here, what we need to do in our duplicated material function that we called exposed, um, do not do this in the main material function as you may destroy something that you've edited previously if you modify that function. So simply duplicate it and work on the duplicated function. You'll find these parameters, highlight pattern, min thickness and max thickness right here. And they're hooked up the, the parameters of the same name in this big material function that actually hosts the main cell shader. And we're simply going to replace these with function inputs. So let's create a function input, set this input type to scalar, because this is a scalar parameter. So this should be scalar too, and plug it into highlight pattern min thickness. Now let's also call this highlight pattern min thickness. Let's do the same thing for this parameter down here. And call this highlight pattern max thickness. Now let's quickly set the default values. Use preview value as default, check that. And now this x value will determine the default value. Um, here the default value is 0, so let's leave this at 0. Here at 0 0.6, so let's set this to 0 0.6. Lastly, set the sub priority to something high, like 100 and 101, so that these parameters will simply be at the bottom of the material function and everything will stay neat and organized. Okay, now we hit apply. And if we go back to this material, you'll find that nothing changed because we also need to update this material function. So let's switch to the exposed version right here. And you'll see that our two new values are added right here. Let's quickly make check use preview value as default on the other one as well. And now those two values are exposed and we can modify them however we want. So let's simply use the debug time sign node and one minus it for the max thickness and plug it into the min thickness. And now hit apply. And let's head over to our material instance. And here, if we enable real time, we'll be able to see the effect in action. The only problem right now is that everything is moving at the same time, and we wanted it. The only problem now is that everything is scaling the same, and we wanted the inside and the outside to scale different. In order to do this, we simply have to add a gradient. And now the inside and the outside will be scaling different. To make this even more pronounced, let's simply move the gradient star to zero, so it's at the center, and now we can see this effect in action. For our third and final example, we're going to do a similar modification to our material functions, so that we can modify the color of our shadows and highlights using textures. In order to do this, let's head to the material functions folder we were in just previously and open the node and copy the node opaque material attributes SRS. Once again, I'm quickly going to call this exposed because we exposed some more values. And here this material function looks very, very similar. We have tons of parameters and this main node that hosts the actual cell shader. And now we want to expose the shadow color and the highlight rim light color. So let's simply duplicate the base color parameter and plug it into shadow color and highlight color. Let's call the first one shadow color, third one highlight slash rim light color. Okay. To have some nice preview values let's simply convert these back to a constant and plug them into the respective inputs. It's important that you don't plug uh, material parameters into there because those parameters will show up in your material instances but you won't be able to edit them and they'll just be in the way. Now let's hit apply, head to our material for this effect, once again set it to unlit and this time we're going to add the node opaque material attributes exposed connected like this and you'll see we have the base color, the shadow color and the highlight rim light color exposed right here. So now what we can do is we can 
at the default inputs node once again and connect everything from the bottom up until metallic and we can add the default UVs node and now for the rest we can simply use um, any texture so let's add a texture sample one for the highlight one for the rim light and let's right click and hit convert to parameter let's call this highlight rim light texture and plug this into those parameters. So right now those are giving an error because we don't have any texture selected here. So let's, pardon me, this should be called uh, shadow texture. Yes. And now let's select a texture. There's this um, default diffuse texture. Let's simply choose this. and connect this UVs input into here. And now for the base color, let's also duplicate this, plug this into here and call this base color. And now we can hit apply and let's go in, let's create a material instance of this. And now you can see that the textures we imported previously controls the color of the highlights and the shadows. But you'll notice that the highlights, rim lights and shadows are significantly darker than the main area even though they have the same texture applied. This is because, by default, the color of the highlight and rim light gets multiplied with the base color to determine that color. So if we want to use the color as we input it, we need to go back to the miscellaneous category down here and enable use override shading for the highlights and rim lights and for the shadow. And now everything is appearing just as we want it to. And now let's search for the texture parameters right here. And let's and let's simply plug any textures that and let's just plug any texture we want into here. Let's leave it at the default diffuse for the base color. Use this one for the highlights and rim lights. And use a different one. Let's use this one for the shadows. And as you can see, now the color of everything is controlled via textures. Now admittedly, this doesn't really look any good. But it does show how you could use any textures you want to control the color of your shadows or your highlights in your project. And if you're doing this on your character and you have dedicated textures for the color of shadows or the color of rim lights and highlights, you could get some really neat effects out of this.